Hello. Hi. Get in, there. Get in the lens there. I have received this today. Hopefully you can see that it says uh, Trinity College London. Oh yes. Trinity College London. AMP House, Dingwall Road, Croydon, CR0, 2LXUK, trinitycollins.com. So, I have read this, I do know what it says. That's why I'm smiling. Uh, Trinity College London, I'm gonna read it out basically, because uh, I'm quite pleased with what it says. Grade seven, guitar, rock and pop. Now, okay, before you say anything, these are official grades. Um, Whoever decides what grades are, these have decided to be as hard as, as they can be for grade seven. I have looked into other exams since I've done this one and other ones do go into a bit more detail about the theory. However, the pieces that the other ones asked to play are as hard as these. So I'm gonna read out what I've got here. Um, and then we'll have a look at the scores. So bear with me. Song number one, Black Dog. The opening riff was stylistically expressed and there was balance to the vocals. Though lyrics were drowned at one point, though there was excellent sync to the backing track. There was evident facial and bodily commitment to the style. The solo was enjoyably expressed and the sound was controlled. A virtuosic performance. Now, a virtuosic performance, who can ask for more? So out of, um, who can ask for better comments, I should say. So out of 25, I got 24. Um, fluency and security, eight out of eight. Technical control, seven out of eight. And communication and style, nine out of nine. And actually, as we go down, I got four marks in communication and style for all the pieces, and also in fluency and security. Um, it's just the technical control, which was slightly off, which is fine. You know, I can't ask for more than this. So. Uh, I'll do it in the order that I played them. Sultans of Swing was the second song. This is the, what's called the technical focus song, so it's the hardest one uh, of the three pieces. Uh, the entry was confidently pursued and finger style was successfully delivered. Rhythms were expertly expressed, note the word expertly. Effects were stylistically nuanced, always retaining a control of the sound, which was attractive. Now, I didn't actually use any effects at all. Um, on that track. It was just um, a Boss Katana 50 with a bit of reverb and a little bit of volume control on the guitar on the second position between bridge and middle, which is what you need for Sultan to Swing on the strap. Um, solos had, a f had fluidity and the range was securely delivered. Rhythms were excellently pursued, though the quieter dynamic was not always clearly defined. Now, that is a fair comment. She's actually quite good, this lady, um, because if I had to criticise myself, I'd say that in the book for grade seven, it is very much, you know, forte, piano, up and down. And I don't think it does that on the record, really. Um, but that is what they're asking for uh, in the piece. And I, 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 did, I did get quieter, but more not turning the volume right down as much as they want, I think, but more just gentle picking. So that's fair enough, the, the, the uh, comments there. Fluency and security, eight out of eight. Technical control, 11 out of 12. And communication style, 10 out of 10. Doing okay so far. Um, the third part I did was the session skills improvising. Now this is the bit that I was quite worried about, actually, because I didn't, uh, this is the first great, uh, well, first music exam I've ever done. I've gone straight into grade seven because I felt that was the, Grade six I felt was quite straightforward and seven was um, moderately challenging and eight is, is actually very challenging. So seven I thought was about the right place to go. Um, and playing the pieces, you either know what you're doing or you don't in a way. Um, the, 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 the song, the original song is available to listen to so you know what it's supposed to sound like. But the book with the tab is there. So you know if you can do it or not really. And of course you need to practice but Give or take a few mistakes. If you're entering an exam, you need to be confident that you can play a tab to a song that is already recorded. The session skills improvising is much more opaque. You don't know exactly what they're looking for. Um, you don't know what uh, chords you're gonna come up with. You don't know what style you're gonna come up with. So for grade seven, the common styles are boogie-woogie and jazz. 
uh, the jazz is um, either going to be in 5-4 or 7-8. Now I don't mind 5-4, but 7-8 is really tricky. It's pretty evil 7-8, especially since they don't give you a, a groove like Money by Pink Floyd. Dum dum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum 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 bum, which that helps you keep the time because you know the notes of the groove relate to the the time. You know the seven uh, notes of the bar. They'll just go one two three four one two three one two three four one two three like that, and it's really difficult. And also on the demonstration CD, they had a snare hit on the, on the seventh. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's really, really awkward. So I was hoping not to get seven, eight, and I got five, four, thank goodness. The other style I was going to say they do is uh, boogie woogie. Using five, four, um, you could say that's the easier of the of the whole lot, boogie woogie, because it's more of a rock bass. It's pretty much always going to be in four, four. Um, but they do have some jazzy chords thrown in. So you could say boogie woogie is maybe the easiest, but it's usually quite fast. Jazz in 5-4 is probably in the middle somewhere, and um, jazz in 7-8 is really the hardest. So I got jazz in 5-4, so in the middle. So I can't complain about that. They give you 30 seconds to look at a chord sheet. Um, you can't really memorise it. You can play it if you... You know, this. it probably takes... Well, they give you 30 seconds to look at it. It takes a lot more than 30 seconds to play through that. So you're kind of stuck. All you can do is the beginning half at, at best. And then the second half is always going to be a mystery. Um, and then they give you another, they give you one time through with the backing track. So then you start to understand uh, the tempo and, well, it tells you the tempo, but you, you get to hear the tempo and um, you can run through it probably three or four repetitions of each time. So it's probably maybe 45 seconds per 16 bars and then maybe three, three and a half times through, let's say, for two and a half minutes, something like that. Um, so I was determined to play the chords at least once through and then improvise the rest of the time because I came to the conclusion that in the easier grades you can just apparently you can just play the chords if you want to but I think you obviously do have to do a lead as well but I would with the demonstration videos that they show you you play the chords very simply the first time more confidently and um, you know, with a bit more complexity to the changes and maybe passing notes, or whatever the second time round, then um, the second and third, sorry, the third and fourth time, you might do an improvisation that becomes more complicated and comes to a crescendo, which is fair enough. With a more simple chord sequence, you think the chord part would be easier, and then the soloing part would get harder. The trouble is when you get to grade seven, six, seven, and eight, I should say, that the chords and the chord changes are so complicated that you actually are it, it could uh, you could argue that it's easier to just do the um the, the solo part and not bother with actually playing the chords through so you've got five four you've got often you've got two chords per bar so it's one two three one two 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 so you're, it's you i think this one started off in a major seven so you'll decide which way i'm going to play it a major seven c minor seven da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, da. so i did the timing wrong. a major seven c minor da, da, ba, da, ba, da, da. this kind of thing so you imagine 16 bars they don't all have two changes but a lot of them do so you look at maybe i don't know 20 changes excuse me i'm having a beer because i'm happy So the point I'm getting at is that playing the changes, sort of playing the chords, you could argue is actually more difficult than the actual solo part, <coughs> because if you get it wrong, it's obvious when you've got it wrong. Whereas with a solo, an improvised solo, nobody's really telling you what to do. As long as you're hitting a root note or a chord tone, you know, you're going to get away with it. Even if you don't, as long as you've got a coherent melody or, a, you know, a theme, um, and phrasing and all these things come into it. So if you've got competent phrasing, you can get with a bum note. Uh, if you've got something interesting to say with a melody or a repetition or various different things that you can do with improvisation, you're going to get away with it. But if you're trying to play the chords as written on the sheet, and it's obvious that you're fluffing them up and you don't know, you, you know, you know, you can't reach an A, a flat major seven, which is a tricky, 
it's easy to say in hindsight, it's not that tricky, but there's three different ways, at least, of playing it. Um, and depends which one you're playing, depends on which what's coming next. So anyway, I did manage, thank goodness, and what she says here, I was going to say I did manage, thank goodness, to get through the chord part, and then um, once I got the swing of the solo, I can't really remember exactly what I did, but there was the odd note that wasn't quite right. But you can always, if you hit the wrong note, you can just slide down to the one it should be. You can kind of get away with it in retrospect. If you're doing. So she says here, there was a well-timed entry with the stimulus. Now that I was very pleased about because it was, I've got with the introduction, well, we played it one time through, so I was into the groove and the tempo of the 5-4. I was one, two, three, one, two, off you go, a flat major seven, and everything was okay. So I think that straight away gets the examiner on your side if you can you know play it play the chord on the beat that should be you've got instantly a good few marks with from that uh, chord changes within the time signature were cleanly done thank you there was melodic development and exploration of range to a certain extent now that's fair enough because it i'll go to that get to that in a second there was a good level of style um, understanding on development, I think it says. So she says a certain extent of exploration of range, and so I got 16 out of 20 for that, which I'm very happy with, that's 80%, that's fine, that's fair, I think. Um, the trouble is, this is a rock and pop exam, and they're asking you to a, an unseen 20 chord jazz 16 bar, it's more than 20, probably 25 chords, 25 changes, jazz improvisation. Now, that's very different to all the other things in the, to the other three pieces, or it's very different to all the other pieces in the syllabus. And you want to think, I'm not, so other exams are a lot more um, theory focused and they will do a lot more difficult stuff. So I'm not criticizing Trinity for having this part in the exam. What I would say is that it's, it just doesn't stylistically match exactly. But then again, they've got to um, make it harder for grade seven, and where do you go for hardness? You go for jazz. And, and Boo Yu actually I think is quite an interesting uh, choice as well, because I've played through the um, example pieces they've got for Boo Yu, and it's not as easy as you think, because you think it's just blues, but it's not. It's got a lot of jazzy changes in. So I'm kind of cool with that. You know what's coming, because and it was very, the, the piece that I had to play was very similar to what was in the um, example books. So, you know, I'm not saying that it was anything that I hadn't expected. It was exactly what I expect. Um, I did dread 7-8 and I'm so pleased I didn't get it. 5-4 was, I think, is a fair um, time signature, really. And, yeah, so I was going to say there was a certain amount of um, a range, yeah, so there's an exploration of range to a certain extent. So what she means by that is that I was hitting some of the more basic chord tones and root notes on the changes, which for me is as much as I could do. I was, you know, it, it, I think it was, from memory, I think it was kind of following the circle of fifths. It went from, I think, C minor down to A flat major to resolve the thing, and you've got two bars in which to do that. So that's not easy. Um, and I didn't hit the chord tones every single time or every single change. So, but that's a whole nother study that's going to take you far, to get to get more than 16 marks at this is going to take you a lot longer, I think, just for those four marks, than it is to practice the other three uh, pieces put together. And I think that's the only reason why I would say that section is slightly incongruous. Having said that, it does depend on how much the marking scheme gives uh, a combination for the fact that we are sort of rock and pop and blues musicians rather than jazzers, you know? I'm, I don't know if there is a specific jazz exam, um, but, you know, this is rock and pop with a bit of jazz thrown in. So anyway, that's my piece about the, um, the improvisation. And you don't even know if you're going to get jazz. You need to be pretty good at boogie woogie, you know, you need to be taking a few lessons from uh, Jules Holland as well. Anyway, what I would also say is that the, the piece that I got was very similar to what is in the books. I think I already said that. So, we've done Black Dog, we've done Souls of Swing, we've done the improvisation. Uh, yeah, 16 out of 20 for the improvisation. The final piece, Voodoo Child, by Mr. Jimi Hendrix. Um, distortion was well judged in the opening and this was rhythmically tight. 
a dynamic was appropriate. Effects in the solo were employed to tie stylistic effect with great control. Now, um, I only I had a I had three pedals. I had a wah wah. Yeah, so I had three a pedal board which I only used for Voodoo Child. I didn't use it for anything else because I didn't really need it for the other ones. Um, I had a wah wah obviously for Voodoo Child. I had a an overdrive which was the uh, Red Llama by Way Huge, and um, a delay, a digital delay, a hardwire delay, which is quite just a versatile delay. That was it. So you do, so Fuji Child is quite dynamic. So um, I think she's saying that dynamics was, were good with that, and that is that is a song which requires better dynamics. Like Sultans of Swing does require dynamics, but it's not a huge amount. You just play louder and you play a bit quieter just with your fingers, whereas Fuji Child generally does, you need to use the equipment to, to give you the different tones. So she's appreciated that. But it was just very simple pedal board, you know, just three pedals. Uh, there was some loss of clarity and balance to lyrics despite the volume being substantially increased as the performance progressed. So she did turn up the backing track about halfway through. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's really my job to balance the lyrics and my amp. I didn't turn the amp up or down at any point, I just played. Um, and you would obviously have a sound man to, if it was an actual gig, to sort out. So I'm not sure that that's particularly, but she had to write something, you know, fill the space. Um, apologies if that seems a bit flippant, but it's not my responsibility to keep the backing, you know, to, to mix the thing. I wanted to make sure my guitar art was, uh, you know, you, she could hear it, otherwise, you know, she's judging me, the guitar player, the balance I thought was a not really uh, here nor there. But uh, this was expressive and involved with a fantastic sound quality. Now, so two things there, I think she's saying that I may have got carried away and made it a bit too loud, fair enough. Now, the fantastic sound quality, so anyway, we'll get to the fantastic sound quality. So I got 8 out of 8 for fluency and security, 6 out of 8 for technical control, and um, 9 out of 9 for communication and style. So I got 4 marks for communication and style all the way through. I got 4 marks for fluency and security all the way through. Uh, I dropped 1 mark on technical for Black Dog, I dropped 1 mark on technical for Songs of Swing, and I got 2 marks on technical for Voodoo Child. Um, which is weird, really. So the ones that are, like Voodoo Child was the one that had the most improvisation in this huge suede. I don't know if it's, I don't know, at least 16 bars uh, in the book. I think it might even be more than that. It might even be 20 or 24 bars, 24 bars, I think, probably, in the book, which just says improvise. So technical control, were you improvising? Surely it, it, it's, it, 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 that kind of doesn't make sense. To, to lose the most. I would have thought, if anything, so, something like Sultan's of Swing, you'd lose the most on technical control, because it's very technical. Anyway, not that I'm complaining. I'm quite happy with things. And just to back up the thing about fantastic sound quality, so I basically took in a Boss Katana 50 combo, you know, quite a small little practice amp, because it has three settings on it, Two, it has two presets and a panel, which means that where you set it on the top is, is what the sound that you get. And I knew the studio I was going to, which is Sound Inc and Bladen, I know they use big orange solid state 120 watt heads and caps. And they can be very loud and very clean and a little bit sort of clinical. And I just didn't really have to want to rely on pedals for all my overdrives. So I used the um, lead channel for Black Dog on the Katana. I used the clean channel, of course, for Songs of Swing, and I used the crunch channel of Voodoo Child, and that's when I used the overdrive, the um, uh, Red Llama overdrive for the solo parts in Voodoo Child. Uh, and it did sound good. Um, and I actually tried, I've got a Katana head as well, and I actually tried that beforehand, and it didn't sound as good. <laughs> that Katana 50. I mean, some people say it doesn't sound very good. I think it sounds absolutely amazing. I know it's just mine. Yeah, somehow it's a good one, but it was really good. And so we're talking about um, the room was loud. Um, the it was a stereo backing track with bass and drums and vocals, and I just had the, the little katana on the floor in front, you know, behind my legs. And uh, it, it's official that Trinity Grade Seven says that's fantastic sound quality on the on the crunch channel with an overdrive for Voodoo Child. So 
Well done, boss. Thanks very much. Um, it was very small and lightweight, and I didn't want to use the orange because I know that it's. I, I wouldn't. I couldn't guarantee my sound. Whereas at home, I can just take. Get, you know, I just have a little katana. I can. I can pre-program two. Well, all three channels. Let's be honest, um, and get what I want out of it. So, yeah, that's cool, and it just goes to show that all you need to get a comment of good sound quality, fantastic sound quality from a Trinity Examiner is a Katana 50. So ironically enough, I had two guitars. I had a, a Bacchus Strat, it's a white Strat with a mint green scratch plate, rosewood fingerboard, vintage appointments, spelling mistake on a headstock, which those who know about Bacchuses will know what I mean. And so that's a nice guitar. It's not that expensive, you know, maybe six to 800 quid for one of those. The vintagey ones where before literally a um, uh, what you call a lawsuit because they did have to stop making them with the proper headstock. Uh, so I think mine's from the 90s. Really fantastic pickups. The everything about it is amazing. So there was that for 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 Souls and Spring and Fiddy Child, and also for Black Dog, I took an R8 um, that I got for two and a half grand in the sale. And these owners said you like the K 